ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Let's Play Morrowind, where I've finally managed to tear myself away from playing Cyberpunk all day uh, to record some more of this, because, um, yeah, I should probably do that, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, um, that game is really good. Very buggy, but it's very good. <laughs> Um, anyway, <clears throat> I'm not here to play Cyberpunk, we're here to play Morrowind. So, previously, I'm sure you need no reminder, but we did, in fact, defeat the, the Daedric Prince here seen in, in a duel after uh, defeating all of his damn werewolves. And, uh, yeah, uh, we've eff effectively beaten the main quest of uh, Blood Moon now. It's done. We still need to go to the Skull Village to get a pat on the back from, from course, Wind Eye, of course. But, uh... Yeah, no, we, we, we're we pretty much sorted. We've done the main quest a little faster than I kind of would have ideally liked, really, because um, I would have liked to have get, gotten the Raven Rock stuff done first, but uh, eh, this is just the way the chips fell. So uh, we do, we can actually go back to Raven Rock, because apparently the uh, trader has been built now, so that will be our, obviously our next order of business. Business with a capital B, in fact. Literal business. Uh, but yeah. We have defeated here scene. And, in the process, we gained Hyacin's ring, I think. Oh, exquisite dark metallic ring. Close, but no cigar. Where is it? It should be in my inventory. I didn't really have time to do a proper check when we were going through Hyacin's uh, dungeon last time. But it should be in here, I think. It's one of those... There it is. Yeah, it's one of those cases where I probably moused over it a dozen times without actually seeing it. Here's Scene's Ring. Value 6,500. So, here's Scene's Ring. This is an interesting bit of kit. In Morrowind, would you like to use it? Sure. We are now a werewolf. With some fascinating running animations. But we are in fact a werewolf with sneaky animations too, which look very silly. You still have to ready your weapon as if you're a, as if you're a humanoid. And uh, I believe even with be use best attack enabled, we still do like directional attacks possibly or maybe it's just a random animation but either way we's a werewolf now and there's the first person werewolf action so this this ring basically is the reason why choosing to become a werewolf during the main quest is kind of for chumps in blood moon because ultimately you can just use this to be a werewolf instead 150 strength. Zero in everything, except for sneak, which is 95. Unarmored, which is 100. Acrobatics, which is 80. Hand-to-hand, uh, -hand, which is 100. 150 agility, 150 endurance. Only 90 speed. You're telling me I'm actually faster while I'm, while I'm in humanoid form. That's funny. Now, um, only issue here is... Um, as you can see, my inventory has disappeared. You can't do this as a werewolf, which which sort of presents a bit of a problem. I can't rest here because enemies nearby, because everybody downstairs now is considered an enemy. Uh, now, I remember the first time I ever did this, I ever played this and got here's Hyacinth's ring. Hello, everybody! I'll just be making my way out of here. It's fine. Actually, no. Oh my god, the power is now mine. Look at this. Oh man. See, see, I think this is now beginning to make me understand why Werewolf is so OP. It's because when you are when you are one as the player, you get to be OP as well. So technically it's fair. But uh, there you go. Can't rest your enemies nearby. Who's, who's the enemy? Oh wait, hang on a minute. It'll be the dude in his room, won't it? Uh, where are you? Hello! Right, he's dead now. You cannot rest in werewolf form, but can we wait for like 24 hours? Um, 
I'm now rooted to the spot, and I have actually turned back into a human again. I, it's sort of human. Um, now, I, the, the weird thing about Hyacinth's ring, though, is is I've had it... Look, <laughs> just ran around a box of shorts. <laughs> the weird thing a bit about about the ring is that sometimes it glitches out, at least it used to do for me, and uh, you couldn't take the ring off, and you were permanently stuck as a werewolf after, after sticking it on, and it was a little bit weird. Waiting seems to have turned us back into a humanoid in this particular case but um yeah it's um interesting i i've always thought by default that you were supposed to be able to go into inventory and take it off whenever you liked but uh I, either it might either my game's glitched or it was never intended to be used that way so it's um it's it's curious but regardless once you get here since ring you can be a werewolf any damn time you like essentially as opposed to involuntarily turning into one every night at least i think it's every night uh as you do if you get the if you fail to cure the disease in the main quest essentially that's the difference you can do it on demand with here scenes ring or if you the on the alternative is if, if during the main quest you succumb to the disease you um, instead have the the more mundane form of of, of uh, being a werewolf, whereby you you just sort of transform involuntarily, which uh, can be a bit of a pain. That loses its novelty after very quickly. Let me tell you. So um, yeah. Anyway, let's <laughs> let's go ahead and load our little old quick save here. Yeah. Now that I've murdered everybody in Thursk. But there you go. Here's his ring. There it is. Probably would have made, assuming I could have used it, probably would have made that last dungeon with the other werewolves a bit more interesting, if nothing else. It probably would have been one hit killing each other, which pro might have been just as frustrating, really. But there it is. Here's the ring, everybody. We have it. One of the cooler items in the game, for pretty obvious reasons, because it actually it has a unique, a very unique effect. But it's ours now, so there you go. Here's the ring value. Only value 6,500. You'd think it'd be worth more than that, but hey. Right, so, let's bugger off to the Skull Village. And have a word with Korst and tell him that the world is saved. Thank you very much. Now, give me a nice reward, please. So, uh, yeah, that's great great stuff. Fathis has now acquired the magical doodad of, of magical doodads. This will make an excellent addition to my collection. Etc, etc. <laughs> but yeah, as magical gadgets go, Hyacinth's ring is quite the find. May prove useful later on. May prove very useful later on, actually. Oh, the temptation to use it now and just murder all these weaklings. But no. Since I don't appear to be able to transform back out of being a werewolf at will, it's not really worth it right now. And as you saw, when you're in werewolf form, naturally, everybody becomes hostile to you. So, Like vampirism in this game, um, it isn't treated as just like a cool, awesome bonus that you can use any time you like. It is treated very much as a curse, really. Vampirism and and werewolfism, I don't know what the word is, um, in this game are very much treated as being a curse that you have to suffer with, um, as opposed to, well, with the exception of Hyacinth's Ring, I suppose. That's that's a bit more convenient, but uh, normal werewolves and normal vampires, yeah, it's not, it's a bit of a pain being, being them in this game, which is interesting. Certainly. It can make your playthrough very interesting if you decide to become one. Uh, but it's not for everyone. So. Cost. Oh, you've cleared up all the dead bodies. That's good news. The creatures have gone, and the lands are whole. Surely the All-Maker is pleased. The Blood Moon prophecy is no more, and the Skull live on. The time of thirst and hot fang is past, but the Skarl will remember him as a once great warrior who has fallen. Prophecy is ended. The werewolves dwindle in numbers. The fire in the lake is no more, and the Horkas have begun to return to the land. You'll be honoured among the Skarl for the parts you've played in this, Fathers Ulven. 
I've heard whispers on the wind that the fate of, of the fate of Hartfang. He had been tempted by dark magic and was corrupted by it. I can only hope that our next leader does not suffer the same fate. As for who that leader will be, uh, only time will tell. You would be a good leader, I think, Fathus, but you are not Skullborn. While you will be remembered with honour, you cannot lead. For now, I will guide the Skull until the time when the Allmaker lets it be known who will carry the mantle. Very well. Werewolves. They are death-eyed, steel-feud, fur-clad blocks of darkness. Indeed, blocks. It's just an interesting choice of word there. So, there you go. There's our celebratory pat on the back. He didn't have much more to offer us than that, uh, unfortunately. Totem? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Really? No, it doesn't seem to be. Little secret? Rumors? Orcas? No, mm, that's it. The signs have faded. The prophecy is at an end. Uh, good. Good. I don't suppose anyone else has got anything to My say. Greetings to you, wanderer. The time of the Blood Moon has passed, and the Skull endure. Blessings of the Allmaker upon you, Blood Skull. Well, I, if it's all the same to you lot, since I've saved the world and everything, I'm going to go help myself to whatever's in Tharston's old house. His great hall over here. It's a shame I can't bring that back with me. That would be great. <laughs> so, do you have anything good in here? Is the question. Oh, he doesn't appear to have a, uh, an upstairs. Where the hell is it? Where the hell does Tharston Hartfang live, then? He must sleep at some point, surely. Weird. Anyway. Well, that's our business with this lot concluded. Uh, we've ultimately failed in our original quest, which was to find and rescue Fox Carrius. Maybe I should go and explain that to the Imperials. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> However, we do want to make our way to Raven Rock, so it's a time to divinely intervene. Oosh. Ah, you still haven't cleared this place up, I see. Captain Carrius. There's been no word from him, he's assumed dead. You would be correct in that assumption. Is there someone we can talk to? Gaia Artorio, whatever her name was? Or is she dead? I can't remember. Been no word from him in weeks, he's assumed dead. I, I guess we're all just going to keep saying that. There doesn't seem to be anyone I can talk to about it. Oh god. I wasn't expecting that to be a load door and it gave me a shock. Uh never mind. <laughs> right, uh yeah, well I don't I don't think we um need to bother with any of this anymore. Now, who do I need to speak to? The tr construction on the trades outpost should be nearly complete. I'm going to assume I should just go directly to Falco. I'm pretty sure, you know, I really am sure that Gaia Artoria is dead. Yes, she, she was killed. Yeah, she was killed in the cave of the smugglers with us, wasn't she? Because uh, da, 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 that's the only person, I, uh, the only other person I can think of to talk to about Carius being dead. Now, oddly enough, I, 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 I was correct in the comments, I think, last time, and I was actually told that he can survive. Uh, he can actually survive that dungeon somehow if you are level 70 billion and in fact can kill the werewolves. And other people did chime in with their personal anecdotes and apparently <laughs> apparently that dungeon is pretty much just about as hard as that in vanilla. 
So it's possibly not a modding issue. Werewolves are just really mean in in Morrowind because uh, a lot of people said that they they were very very much had a similar situation when they played through it. And I have played through it before. I guess I just don't remember because it was probably at least a decade ago. So a lot of basks in the sun because te- generally I don't tend to get the Blood Moon in a playthrough until quite late in it because of the level requirement and. Uh, I've always suffered from restartitis in RPGs a lot, so uh, most of my Morrowind playthroughs kind of don't make it this far in, uh, if you know what I mean. So uh, I haven't actually played Blood Through Blood Bloom. Blah. I haven't actually played Blood Moon through that very that often, you know. So let's scenic travel to Raven Rock. I could be telling you all of this while on the boat, couldn't I? Instead of just standing there staring at the Argonian. Well, it's a lovely day, isn't it? Yeah, that tiled sky texture is not great, is it? Uh, it's a bit noticeable. Let's not stare at it. It's a bit difficult not to, though, isn't it, really? Uh, let's lower the camera like that. There we go. That's better. That's, that, that must be one very chilly berserker over there. Goodness me. Now, the Ashfall Ash mod I've mentioned a couple of times, uh, one of the other features it actually has is temperature. Frostfall style, it does actually feature temperature. Obviously, I, I imagine it's not such a, quite as much of a huge deal unless you come here to solve time, but uh, it does have a temperature mechanic as well in addition to food and sleep and all that, which is kind of interesting. Like I said, I don't think I'm going to install it for this playthrough because it just wouldn't fit, but uh, next time... Next time I do a Morrowind playthrough, I think, I'll, I think I'll play around with it. It'll be interesting to see what areas of the world the modders have considered to be cold and which ones have considered to be warm. I'm assuming the Ashlands will be quite hot. Along with probably the, the bit of coast swamps and what have you. Uh, that'd be interesting. And obviously this place will be bloody freezing, but... Uh, yeah, and I, I I think it works with Tamriel Rebuilt as well, so maybe that'll be a whole thing too. Because you'd think the further south you got, the warmer it would get. But then again, I don't know if Tamriel really conforms to any known laws of physics in terms of the way its climates work, really, because you've got like the deserts of elsewhere on the same latitude as as. Valon Wood, haven't you really? So, and, and Hammerfell is on the same latitude as Skyrim, which doesn't make much sense. So uh, maybe, maybe that's maybe that's pure nonsense. Maybe it's just cold and hot and weird places in Tamriel. Right, here we are. Let's have a look at this trader then, shall we? Wherever it is. You know, it doesn't look like it's been built. I'm just going to say it, Falco, but it doesn't look like it's been built yet. Oh, I have to go talk to... Your... Decisions are good, but good decisions are better. For heaven's sake, Falco. Fine. <laughs> Worry not, friends. I will not scenic travel back again this time. I'll just do it instantly. How annoying. How annoying. We're going to go that back there in like two minutes from now and it's going to be magically done. This is going to be so weird. <laughs> oh dear. Hello. Trade it out. Trade it Almost done. Fine. Fine. Now leave me alone. Right. So now we go back on the boat, and in the space of one boat trip, they will have completed building the the uh, the, the traders thing. Sigh, sigh. Ah, uh, this is this is classic Morrowind journal stuff, though, isn't it? Really, not telling you vital pieces of information like that. Oh well. that in the distance in the fog nice 
I would like I would like to travel the Raven Rock. Yeah, and let's do it just instantly, please. If you wouldn't mind. Thank you. Right. Falco. It still doesn't look that well actually. This is new. This is the trader. Oh brilliant. Sathin Andrano. Hello there, Fixer. Do you have any bears or wolf pelts? Any hawkers tusks or perhaps my any snow bears or snow wolves pelts or something even better? I'm ready to buy and sell. Okay, so you'd buy my pelts off me, would you? Alright, well, unlucky for you, I'm keeping them to use as rogues, but uh, it's good to know they're valuable. Because I like for having valuable things in the stronghold. That's always good. What have you got anyway? Just the usual trade of junk, really, isn't it? <laughs> Nothing terribly exciting, unfortunately. But um, the people of the town will probably appreciate it more, though there's a worn and weathered note. I'll have that. Can't turn, turn down a worn and weathered note, can I? Here you go, have a septum for that, matey. What's this about, then? I am forever swimming around amidst this ocean world we call home. My limbs grow weak and weary as my eyes drift skyward in defeat. I remember how warm the earth felt as I lived and breathed next to her beating heart. I remember enough to keep searching through an ocean of tears raised to astronomical depths. My dreams offer solace where I return to distant faded times. Through trees entwined with cool autumn air, my sorrow is lured by fragrant bittersweet memories. Uh, I am at as, at home as much as my world and consciousness allow. I remember falling into the most beautiful lake I've ever experienced. She swallowed me whole like a droplet, and I was enraptured and enwombed within her bliss. The lonely windswept desert sky of my soul was filled with her luminous stars in awe and saw it all reflected in the shimmering ripples dancing and playing about the surface. It appeared to me as real as the very wonders it was reflecting. I stepped forward to prove to no one and everyone that they were by belief. Uh, for an aching instant, I was betwixt the two and the summation. The confusion befell me, and I fell through, only to realize I hadn't entered the lake. I had left it. With all my remaining life, I howled at the heavens and collapsed like a star on the shores of my youth as my life's breath wandered away from the home it had harbored. I have been drowning on dry land ever since. I lay there, coital for... How wet heaven knows how long I felt eons ebb and flow in the span of seconds. I lived as intently as I could in those endless instants as the boredom of after droned on and on. The fires of my heart grew dim and became only the faintest embers of the roaring blaze they had once been. My limbs, heavy with the weight of the world, protested. I felt the longing of this life, which slowly began to ease the agony in my heart. As I was gradually nursed back to health, knowledge of, and of record and history tried desperately to fill the yawning, nauseous chasm of my soul. I began to know the deadpan search for freedom and forgetfulness, and I re released the hold on my life. Though it still lurched, pained in front of me, I just stared back with tired, vacant eyes as if watching the most fascinating of nothing. My mind drifted, only to be slammed back reluctantly, repeatedly, and painfully by those I vaguely remember knowing, as if from a different life and age. I try in vain to forgive and to forget myself as I paced on those... <sighs> as I paced on those plaster smiles and strained to look levelly. I remember, I forget, I forget again. I remember less. I am saddened at the thought that what I have forgotten, I am not who I used to be. Though it pained me so, I was never so real as those lonely lost times of my undoing. I am torn asunder at the thought of losing forever that which has changed my life eternally, and that which I fear in the depths of my soul will never be again. That for which has gifted me with more pain than I have ever known in all of my lives, or all of the lives that I know through my own. Who am I to ask this of you? I think I want my money back. Right, Falco. Where are you? I'm here. I'm ready to do whatever you need doing next. Minus a few extra brain cells, but I am here regardless. Assumes that nothing is easy, easy Father Zulvan. Garnius's replace, replacement supply ship has brought new problems with it, namely one Barrow Ignatius. 
He seems to think that he deserves extra payment for delivering our supplies and taking the ore back to the mainland, and I, for one, have no intention of giving in to him. I've given up trying to reason with him. Why don't you try talking some sense into him? He is the captain of the new supply ship that's arrived. He should still be down by the dock. I don't believe he's budged since he made his demand for extra payment. He's demanding a ridiculous sum of money. I won't even repeat what it is, or else he'll refuse to take any of the ore back to the mainland. This is unacceptable, and something needs to be done about it. I've tried reasoning with him to no avail. I'd like you to talk to him. Uh-huh. All right, well, jolly good. I'll jump right on that. I it just so happens I have a special little gadget that will help an awful lot with this. Where is it? Do, 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 do. Do, 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 the arf arf seal of the arch magister. There it is. Why, hello there, my dear fellow. How are you today? Well, now, they finally sent someone to deliver the extra payment I requested. I told them if I was going to make this trip on top of what Elberoff was doing, it would cost them. Now, I'm getting tired of waiting. He's a friend of mine. Not much to look at. Certainly not much of a captain, but he was a hell of a fighter. Always brandishing that stupid sword of his. Uh, but what business is it of yours? Let's talk about that extra payment of mine, shall we? That's right. You see this boat? It doesn't go anywhere until I've got that money in my hands. Your boss already knows what I'm after. And unless you're here to give it to me, I suggest you get lost. Otherwise you might get hurt. <laughs> I can I can do the scenic travel options with this guy. How How interesting. Yeah, what's it to you? So I think I know what we need to do here. Because charming him hasn't worked. I like to think my headcanon for that is that he's just too bloody stupid for it to actually work on him. Uh, okay, so. Let's have another chat with Falco just to begin with. See, he's completely unreasonable. There must be a way around this Father Sullivan. Talk to Apronia. Maybe there's some way to exploit this connection to Elberoth. Right, I think I've already tagged on it what it is, but let's talk to her anyway. Well, if it isn't you again, I dare say Another you're day. one of the nicest Another people I met. And that's saying quite a lot. Well, if it isn't you again, Father Sullivan, how are you? Uh, well, let's see. What do we need to do here? Elberoth, I guess. He was completely incompetent as a ship captain, I can tell you that much. Such an odd little Bosma, too. Thought he was the best fighter in the province. Always waving that sword around, but then the ship crashed and uh, he was injured. For all his talk of being a good fighter, he sure didn't last long against those horrible undead things. I ended up taking his saber and using it to defend myself. About the only thing he ended up being good for, in my opinion. His saber, eh? Oh, it certainly came in handy. Uh, now that I think of it, though, I don't really have much of a use for it. Uh, yeah, you take it. Not like it's worth much of anything, but uh, odds are you'd be more likely to use it than I ever will. Thank you very much for that, Apronia. Apronia gave me Elbroth Saber. Saber since she no longer needs it. Right, let's go and have another word with Mr. Ignatius. May I help you? Well now, have they finally sent someone to deliver the extra payment I requested? Told him if I was going to make this trip onto what Elbroth was doing, I it would cost him, and I'm getting tired of waiting. Keep bringing him up, do you? Well, if only you were here, he'd wipe the floor with you. Wouldn't be nearly as gracious as I have. I mean, little Bosma, he is. Keep annoying him like this, and he'd likely put his sabre through your skull. Next time I see him, I'll make a point of mentioning you. Perhaps he'll pay you a visit. His sabre, you say? What? You're going to try and tell me you have it? Sure, <laughs> it's easy to talk. A guy like Elberoth, though, he, he wouldn't just say he had his saber. He'd show you he had it. The guy looking at Elberoth holding his saber, he'd understand things pretty good. Or he'd be real sorry. All right, then. What do you think now? Don't try to intimidate me, you 
that, that sword, uh, uh, that looks like Elberoth's. Is, is that his saber? How did you... But but where? So it's true. He's dead. You don't mean to tell me that you... I mean, you didn't... You didn't kill him, did you? Okay, listen. Maybe I was made a bit of a mistake, all right? How about I just take the ship and deliver the ore and we won't have any sort of problem at all? Just... Just don't hurt me. Look, I'm going. I'm going now. See, Barrow Ignatius recognized Elberoth's saber while I was holding it, and mistakenly thinks that I killed Elberoth. This works in my favor, since now he's willing to transport the goods without any extra payment. Jolly good. <laughs> uh... Decisions are good, but good decisions are better. Right. You've spared me from having to make that extra payment. For that, I thank you, Feathers. Well done. Well done. Perhaps things can return to normal. Thanks for the thousand gold. The logs from the mines aren't adding up, Feathers. Or is disappearing, and if my hunch is right, Urin Marin is the, o is the one making it disappear. Of course, if my hunch is right, we're going to need proof of his theft. Marin, you say. I won't reveal where the information came from, but I can tell you that I believe he's hiding the ore in a chest in his house until he can offload it to someone else. I want you to find that chest and get the ore from it. You'll need this key to get in the, into his house. Well, you keep paying me a thousand gold or more, and you will have that chest, my friend. Right. Marin's house. Marin's house. Ah, it's right here. Lock level 100. Wow, okay, this guy. <laughs> this guy's not mucking around, is he? Bloody hell. I suppose I don't need to sneak, do I? I'm the authority around here. I am the law. Uh, let's see. Ah. Could it possibly be this easy? No. The chest in Urin Marin's house is indeed empty. You got anything else good while I'm here, though? Scorpion stinger, yeah. If only poison was an actual thing that properly worked in this game. Like, as in you could make poisons. I bet someone will do that for OpenMW. At some point, a mod that lets you make poisons. If it hasn't been done already. Now then. Falco, got some it's bad news, mate. Thing. It's another. What? My information was very reliable. Uh, it may be that it was ripped off by someone. I don't claim to have a monopoly on spying here at Ravenrock. Well, if we don't have any evidence, then we'll just have to catch him red-handed. He should be in the mine. Follow him and see if he does anything suspicious. Take care not to be seen by anyone, as they could alert him to your presence. Well, no worries there, uh, Falco. I've had a lot of <laughs> recent experience with not being seen. And somehow, I suspect this will be much easier. Regardless. However. Let's switch our gear out slightly. Where is... Uh, where is my special glove? My oh, special glove, if I'm not already wearing it. No, I am wearing it. Deceit, good. Okay. Uh, sneak 71. I'm sure I can get it higher than that. Is there something I'm missing here? Is there something I'm missing here? I'm sure I've had it to 75 before. I've got so many doodads now that I, I just don't... I just don't remember what... What, what, what they all do, really. Whatever. Uh... Ring of Khajiit. That's probably the most. Uh, that's probably the most useful item, really. Under the circumstances, right. God, we got the Ring of Khajiit ages ago, didn't we? We got it from uh, Mafala, if I recall. I think that might have been our very first Daedric quest. We're down with the demon, de the demon Daedric princes, isn't he? Isn't isn't he far this in this in this? One hundred percent. Is this our guy? Oh, hello, Mr. Myron. I'm here to inspect the, uh, torches. Yep. 
That's what I'm doing. So where are you off to, my friend? Once again, fun to note. Ah, uh, he's you know he's up to no good when he's doing that animation, don't isn't he? <laughs> Does, he does seem to have stopped, though, doesn't he? Alright, off he goes. This is another example of Bethesda, like, sort of Oblivion-era Bethesda, if you like, sort of starting to show itself, where we're getting quests which are richer a lot less, go here and kill this dude, and a bit more uh, kind of like follow an NPC around and, and that kind of thing, and everything's a bit more voice acted than normal and that sort of thing. It's interesting to see that sort of uh, evolution of design that happens within Morrowind. You know, you go through you go through Morrowind itself, and then you go through Tribunal, and then you go through this, and you can actually see a distinct change in the way they made uh, and designed the game. But anyway, I followed Durin Marin to the storage room where he has no business being. Oh, nice! <laughs> right, now it's 77. What's going on? What's going on? It was 71 a minute ago. Whatever. Hello, Urin Marun. There's a perfectly good explanation for this, I assure you. <laughs> I, like, I like that he has a voice line for that. I could, oh, man, can you imagine Fathis just l emerging from the shadows behind you and saying, Hello, Urin Marun. God, terrifying. Anyway, F Fathis, Ulvin, what, what are you doing here? Uh, there's, a, there's a perfectly good explanation for this, I assure you. Yes, yes, you, you see, I, I, well, I, I, I was, uh, okay, fine, you caught me. But I swear, I didn't want to do this. Carney has put me up to it. He said he'd kill me if I didn't, didn't steal as much ore as I could. I'm telling you, Carney has made me do it. Go ask him if you don't believe me. Uh-huh. Okay, Uren, if you say so. Let's go have a word with Falco about this. That there's right now's probably thinking, yeah, he might have a, he might be telling the truth. Because Garnius is doing what I would probably do right now. Right. Just as I suspected. I didn't want to say anything at the time, but I was relatively sure that Carnius was involved. Well, now that we have a witness, perhaps it's time that we bring this matter to the attention of the investors. I'll see to it that Urin is sequestered in one of the colony's storerooms for now. Go and see Carnius. What? Go and see what Carnius has to say for himself, won't you? Very well. With pleasure. Divine intervention. Completely the wrong way. Need to go this way. You chose Falco. Fine. Just leaves more for me. What is it, Fixer? You chose yourself to. You cho choose to ally yourself with Falco, then come. Come to me expecting work. I didn't realize you were that stupid. I demand an explanation, actually. You're going to accuse me of being involved in this? Ha! <laughs> so be it. I warn you, be very careful with how you handle this, Fixer. It'll be my word against the word of a thief. Whom do you think will be believed? Actually, on that note, assignment? Uh, wait, no, where is it? Uh, promotion. I haven't done this in ages. Little Falco's little puppet, not mine. Beg him instead. All right, I thought you were the one I had to say about that. Uh. Carnis denies having an involvement with Irin's theft and says Irin Maran will be dealt with. I don't suppose if I were to do this, it would make any difference, would it? Bollocks, I wasn't what I meant to do at all. Damn it. X 
explanation. I've said all I have to say on the subject, Fixer. I suggest you leave. All right. Back Go ahead, Go again. Get out of my way. Do you know, I should... Actually, no. I was about to say I should really set a recall spell on... Um, what's it called? On Raven Rock, but actually I like having one in Thursk for the simple reason that a lot of my stuff is at Thursk still. So uh, I'll just carry on using boat rides, I think. Take me to Raven Rock again. He's making a killing, this guy, from all my boat rides, isn't he? Bloody hell. Blood Moon has some great ambient dialogue. <laughs> Morrowind has great idle dialogue just in general, to be fair. Uh, right. It would appear that the matter of Ura and Mardrin has been settled for us, Fathers. He was found dead shortly after being locked up. Of course, I have no proof that he was murdered, and there are no witnesses. I'm sure Carnius has something to do with it, but I can't prove it. I don't... If, sorry, if I can't prove it, I don't dare accuse him of it. At least the thieving problem should stop, for now. You've done good work, Father Sylvan. Thank you. 500 gold. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I don't have anything for you right now. We're concentrating on finishing up the current construction here at the site. Come find me when we're done with it. Alright, but uh, can I get some promotion? Very well. You're now Father Sylvan, agent of the East Empire Company. Very well, you are now Father Sylvan, negotiator of the East Empire Company. Very well, you are now Father Sylvan, officer of the East Empire Company. Very well, you are now Father Sylvan, deputy of the East Empire Company. I don't have the authority to promote you past deputy, Father. It's not while Carnius is the factor. Uh, okay. Does that mean factor is the next rank up? Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. Tell you what, why don't we? No, no, no. Let's not do that. Let's do a do a hard save. Let's play one five five. Let's just see what happens if we murder Carnius. I did say I might try that out. What if we just kill him? What if Fathers takes matters into his own hands and provokes him into attacking him and then kills him? Eh? Yes. How's about that? What, 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 what would that... What would then happen? Once more, with feeling. Let's see. Uh, can I provoke him with magic? Do I have any frenzy? I don't, do I? I think I just need to taunt him. Which I can certainly do. What did I hear correctly? You'll be sorry you said that, Dark Elf. You'll be sorry you said that, Dark Elf. You'll be sorry you said that, Dark Elf. You think so, do you? Perhaps you want to prove it. You think so, do you? Perhaps you want to prove it. You think so, do you? Perhaps you want to prove it. That makes me angry. Cheap words, Dark Elf. There's nothing behind them. You would lose. You would lose. You're not worth killing. That does it. Let's see what you're made. Whoa, nice mace, dude. <laughs> I didn't expect that. <laughs> wow. Maybe I should have in this DLC. Whoa, dude is tough. Holy crap. I should have prepared for this, clearly. I think he's healing himself as well. Dead. Star and Mace. So it's the Mace of Avar Stone Singer, but the non-magical version. Nine Restore Health exclusive. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. All right, Carnus is dead. So now what happens if we go back and talk to Falco about uh, what just happened? 
<clears throat> Let's hear. I've never tried to do this before. And sometimes in Morrowind, it's worth doing things that you've never tried to do before, because it can have interesting results. Not always, in fact, most of the time it doesn't, but sometimes. Thinking of the main quest of the main game specifically here, sometimes it leads to very interesting results. Back to Raven Rock, please. Thank you. <laughs> can you imagine? Well, I can't promote you to Factor while Carnius is still here. Fath's just like, well, I can arrange something to something about that. I can do something about that for sure. Carnius is dead. Well, then the colony is as good as closed. Is that it? That's that all that happens. Uh, okay, I'm a bit disappointed, I've got to say. Well, at least they added some dialogue for it. I understand why, because I'm pretty sure killing Carnius would totally break the, the Raven Rock quest line. Uh, but, yeah. Interesting. Interesting stuff. It was worth having a check out, wasn't it? Uh, so... I almost thought about putting that in a little separate video extra, what happens if we kill Carnius, but uh, I don't think it would have been worth it, judging by that result. And it was very quick to do anyway. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching today. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed that little extra bit I tacked on the end there. Uh, I will be back again as soon as humanly possible with more of Morrowind and Fathers' adventures on the island of Solfsheim, which will soon-ish be drawing finally to a close whereupon he'll be heading home back to Vardenfell. And where from there? Well, I know. But uh, you guys will have to wait and find out. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you very much. Toodaloo.